Hello, my name is Russell Fox. I'm chairman of the Southwick Select Board, and we're here today to discuss the uh, special town meeting coming up and also the annual town meeting. Uh, today I have mm -hmm. the pleasure of having our town moderator, Celeste St. Jacques, here uh, to help me uh, do this program. So Celeste, welcome. Welcome. So the town meeting this year is going to be held on May 16th at the high school. We're going to be in the auditorium. We'll be starting the special town meeting at 6.30 and the annual town meeting at 7. We start promptly at 7 for the annual town meeting, so make sure you're in your seats by 7 because you'll have to check in. We need to check because the annual town meeting is open to all registered voters, so you need to check in as you're coming to vote. I've done a little bit of research. We have almost 40 articles in total with the special and the annual. So I've done some research on how we can streamline some things. I'll be talking a little bit less. That'll give us a little bit more time for um, explanation of the articles, which I think is m much more valuable than listening to me speak. And then we'll be voting by hand, by, vo by voice, by hand, and then doing a hand count if necessary. The benefit of being an annual town meeting is, they say the open town meeting, and Russ will agree with me, is the purest form of government. And why we say that is because you, the citizens, as registered voters, get to vote and share your opinion, and this is when you come out and do it. So we'll get started on the ar article All explanation. Right. Very good, Celeste, very good. We do have the purest form of government, the open town meeting form of government. Uh, the elected officials in the town of Southwick can't do anything unless they're authorized by the voters, you the voters. So we encourage people to come out. It's very important to come out and uh, have an opportunity to debate issues, to discuss issues and to vote on issues. So we're gonna begin first with the special town meeting, which again uh, begins at 6.30 p.m. Uh, the special town meeting is something we annually do uh, ahead of the annual town meeting to tie up uh, issues in the current fiscal year. This year we have four articles. Uh, the very similar articles that we have every year. The first article is to transfer from existing funds. Uh, it covers negotiated agreements for a staff of a uh, total of 50 plus employees in the present fiscal year. Uh, these funds come from several salary reserve accounts, available funds set aside to cover these costs. Uh, so this is again a, a, a housekeeping thing. Uh, in total, I think we uh, are talking about $78,300 for general government, $2,500 for sewer, and water would be $2,900. Article two is, uh, again, something we see each year. It covers the cost of, from the winter, uh, where we've gone over on our salt and plowing and overtime. This year, and th this money we uh, annually take from uh, free cash. This year, we had we were over by two hundred and thirty-five thousand uh, dollars, which is uh, excellent considering we had a, a mild winter. Article three is uh, uh, something that uh, we've been doing uh, for the past several years. is something that's uh, recommended by uh, our financial advisors, and this is OPET and OPED is Other Post-Employment Benefits. And we take this money, a certain amount each year, uh, to put into a, a stabilization account. And this year we're requesting $25,000 from free cash. Article four, the last article, is we are recommending, and along with the Finance Committee, to take from free cash. Uh, we're recommending the sum of $675,000 to purchase a highway road machinery of a one-ton pickup truck for $175,000. And we're also recommending uh, putting aside $500,000 for roads. As everyone knows, um, it's not just Southwick, but every community, uh, we're having a, a backlog on our roads. Uh, this additional $500 would uh, also be used along with our Chapter 90 monies that we'll be receiving in the new fiscal year and any additional monies that's uh, uh, 
appropriated at the annual town meeting. Celeste, any comments about the special? Just as in any article after, we'll always ask questions after every article before we take a vote. So this is your time to stand up, ask questions, make comments. You have two minutes to make a comment. Um, and I, the comments come in through the moderator and I'll direct them to either the DPW, select board, whoever, whatever, whatever article happens to be up. All right, we're now we're gonna move on to the annual town meeting. And Celeste, one more time, where is the annual town the meeting? The annual town meeting starts at 7 p.m. on May 16th at the high school. We start at seven o'clock. Don't show up at seven o'clock. You wanna be in your seat by seven. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you, Celeste. Mm -hmm. All right, the first article, believe it or not, is an article that uh, um, we vote to accept that we had an election the previous week. Uh, don't ask me why it's done, it's, uh, but it's required by law. So that is your first article. Article two, three, four, and five are what we refer to as housekeeping articles, okay? Uh, they're basically, Article two is to accept the annual town report of the select board, town accountant, town clerk, water commissioners, and all others. Article three gives the authority for the select board to appoint minor officers. Article four gives the authority to the select board to sell obsolete equipment. And then we move on to article five, uh, which, which uh, allows the select board to apply for grants for the town of Southwick. So again, those are what we refer to as housekeeping articles. And Celeste, are you gonna take all those articles? We're gonna vote on those all together unless somebody wants to hold one. They'll all be up for discussion at the same time if people have questions, but if anyone feels they wanna pull one out, we can, do, we can have that pull it out by a motion in a second and a vote. But it's pretty routine, we do this every year. Um, ask questions if you have questions at the town meeting. That's what we're there for. And just, just so everybody knows, so the moderator has already said this is going to be uh, an annual town meeting with 38 articles. The special only has four, but the annual has 38 articles. So this would be a good method uh, by combining all those five articles, taking one vote so that we can get on to some of the uh, uh, other uh, business uh, because uh, quite frankly, it's gonna be a longer night, folks. Uh, I don't want to uh, discourage anybody from not attending. I think it's very important for people to attend, but it is gonna be a longer night. Article seven is uh, considering borrowing for road reconstruction. And this goes back to addressing the needs of our roads and infrastructure. And uh, this is something that the select board has recommended uh, and uh, has the endorsement of the finance committee to authorize a borrowing of $1 million. This would augment the $500,000 if approved at the special. It would also augment the uh, annual chapter 90 money that we get from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, do we need this money? My opinion, absolutely. Uh, you know, we're just not getting enough money from the Commonwealth to keep up with the backlog of roads. Right now, to reconstruct a road, it's costing approximately $1 million per mile. You skipped Article 6. I apologize. And you skipped it, but this is the one I wanted to explain because I wasn't sure of the wording of this then one. Then I apologize, so. Madam, uh, Madam Moderator. <laughs> I will let you explain uh, Article 6. No, no, you explain it because it's, it's um, the amendment to the uh, revolving accounts. Right. Which is a new th type of amendment okay. that we have. And, and this is uh, uh, Article 6. Article 6 establishes a new revolving account to allow the town to collect fees for police cruisers used at private details. Okay. Uh, where they, we send a cruiser out where Eversource or Verizon okay. or someone or some private entity needs a, a police detail. Uh, we'll send out a, uh, uh, one of our older cruisers that we repurposed okay. and we do charge for that. So this would allow the police department to uh, 
keep retain those monies so that they can do minor repairs, oil changes, things of that nature. That sounds and we'll be sounds like a win-win. Right, and Article Six will eventually be part of the revolving uh, account, uh, which is going to be Article Nine this year, okay. where we authorize revolving accounts from just about everything in town, like management, uh, building inspector, uh, custodial services, council on aging, et cetera. So thank you for pointing out. I didn't mean to skip that. Article 8 is a borrowing authorization, and this is a, an article that authorizes the select board to borrow up, up to $318,000 to purchase a dump truck for use by the highway department. This will be replacing a 1999 Freightliner FL80 dump truck. Uh, it will be used for snow plowing as well as hauling stone, sand, and other materials. Uh, this is a vehicle that has become very costly uh, because of repairs. So uh, this would be an additional piece of equipment that we will be replacing at the DPW if the voters authorize it. Moving on to Article 9, and Article 9 is your annual budget, and we will be going over the annual budget. The Finance Committee is basically in charge. They will be making a recommendation. Uh, it's an opportunity for everybody to go over every single line item in the budget. I and think what you say is important because it is a recommended by the Finance Committee. Our Finance Committee in Massachusetts is not an appropriating board. It's a recommending board. The thing that'll be a little bit different when we go through the annual budget is we still will vote on each individual budget item, but I'm not gonna kind of read through. I'm gonna probably take a pause and give everyone about 30 seconds to kind of look through it. Instead of reading through it, this way everyone can compare year to year. On the budget, it does show increases over the last couple of years, so it's a good opportunity. Just take a minute. I'll introduce the heading, let everyone take a look at it, and then we'll go take questions from there. But we do vote on each individual budget. So if you have a question, ask it on the one we're on before we move on. Right, and uh, normally what you do is you'll do it in sections. Sections, right. absolutely. So yep. that uh, once we go from one section, we'll move on to the next section. Right. But we, uh, and I know you are very good about giving people an opportunity. You always ask them one more time, are there any questions on this section? And then we'll take a large vote at the end, one general vote at the end to confirm that we're passing the budget. Great, and that will be your total budget figure for the town government, which is separate from our uh, regional school budget. All right, Article 10 is, is the revolving accounts that I just mentioned uh, under Article 6. And this gives these various uh, different entities that operate in the town of Southwick to collect funds and expense funds to cover their expenses. Uh, again, it goes from police, fire, inspectors, uh, conservation, council on aging, DPW, uh, just a, a whole list. And this is required by law that uh, the voters approve this type of system. But what it does is, is it allows these different entities to collect the money, use the money for their expenses. Article 11 is the regional school budget, and this one is kind of an up or down vote. You don't have the opportunity to go over every line item. Uh, normally, the superintendent of schools is there, uh, chairman of the regional school committee there, along with different members, uh, partic in particular, Southwick members of the regional school committee are there to answer questions. We may normally have the business manager there. But it does give people an opportunity to a ask questions, uh, and usually the superintendent and business manager do go over and try to give an explanation of, uh, of their budget. Article 12 is when the regional school committee gets up, or the, again, the superintendent, in, uh, and is requesting their debt authorization. And this covers capital improvements and this year, they're looking for a total of $515,000. They're looking for $450,000 to, 
to improve their network improvements at their school system that has, is, is just aged and uh, they can no longer get parts uh, to fix the old system, so they're looking for to, uh, to uh, bring in a new system. The other 65,000 is to replace a maintenance van that uh, uh, I describe as a, a rust bucket. <laughs> All right, now we're going on to Article 13. Article 13 is something that was in front of the planning board. They formed a special committee. It is on short-term rentals. Uh, most people refer to this as Airbnbs. Airbnbs, yep. Uh, they've spent a whole year with the committee. Then the committee went back to the planning board, then had additional input from our uh, building inspector and others. Uh, I believe uh, uh, people might want to read through this. I think it's about three or four I think if pages. Yeah, I think if it's something that you are planning on doing and you've been kind of thinking about renting an Airbnb, you really need to take your time and read through this bylaw. We won't read through it. The um, chairman of the planning board will give a brief description, but if it's something you're concerned about, I definitely suggest reading this article in depth before you get to town meeting. And then you can ask specific questions. Right. In general, I think we all realize there are Airbnbs that are operating in the town of Southwick. We don't have any regulations, and the town, uh, the committee that was formed went over this along with the planning board, and they're making a recommendation that uh, we have reg uh, regulations so that if there is an issue, uh, we have some, some guidelines for people to follow so that uh, it fits into our community, that there's a, a method to address uh, noise, trash, any disturbances for neighbors. So I, I, I think uh, they've put a, a tremendous amount of time in this and I think people should read through it and uh, listen to what the planning board has to say. The Article 14 is a uh, landowner petition. It's concerning changing a zoning on uh, College Highway uh, at 771 College Highway it's next to what is now uh, Winfield's condominiums. And what, I, what uh, from my understanding, and the, uh, the petitioners will be speaking about it at the town meeting. They, they want to put in similar uh, housing that uh, Winfield possesses. But uh, that is a citizen's petition, and that will be up to those people to explain that article. Article 15 is another citizen's petition. Uh, and what this one is, is to set term limits for the select board. And uh, they're, as I read through it, they're looking that no selectman can have more than three terms and then has to step down and then would not be eligible again to run for the select board for three years. And that again is a citizen's petition. It will have to be explained by those individuals. Article 16 is in another citizen's petition. And this is uh, attempts to elect s several members to the Conservation Commission and have several members appointed by the select board. And again, this would be something that would have to be explained by the uh, people that put forward this citizen petition. Article 17 is something that uh, a member of the uh, uh, select board is asked that be put on the annual town meeting. And what this would do would change our current prohibition of against uh, retail non-medical marijuana establishments to allow retail non-medical establishments in the town of Southwick. I, I would only add that this would only be the first step. Uh, even if this were to pass, uh, we would still not uh, be allowed, it's non-medical uh, retail marijuana establishments would still not be allowed because there is a zoning uh, uh, prohibition against that. So another article would have to come to a future special or annual town meeting and uh, that vote would be a uh, two-thirds vote, where this uh, Article 17 is a simple majority vote. 
Moving on to Article 18, and we got several of these. This is the Community Preservation Budget, and uh, the first article is to set their, uh, you know, basically their uh, budget for the year, the monies that they've collected uh, uh, through uh, the 3% uh, surtax uh, uh, that's collected on, on the tax rate and they designate how they're uh, to expend, 10% uh, for open space, 10% for um, community uh, historic, 10% for housing, and the remainder uh, of 70% uh, to, uh, uh, to the general unreserved fund. And that, this is an annual article. Uh, it's, it's basically another housekeeping article. Article 19 sets aside 5% of the community preservation money for their administrative and operating costs. This takes care of uh, secretarial duties, any paperwork, any seminars, uh, travel, conferences, anything like that. Article 20 is still, we're still uh, in community preservation. And uh, Article 20 takes care of the alum treatment debt service that was funded by the bonding issue from community preservation. Uh, it was a $600,000 bond issue for the treatment of alum treatment for Congamon Lake. This will be the fourth uh, payment principal and interest of $71,600. Article 21, again, community preservation. The restoration of the bronze memorial plaques at our, our, at our cemetery, and this would be, uh, excuse me, at our war memorial, not at our cemetery, and this amount would be 16500 Article 22, again, community preservation funds, and this is to see if the town will appropriate and transfer the sum of $294,000 to establish a spray park at Wally Park. Article 23, again, community preservation funds, and this is uh, for repairs at the historic Moore House on College Highway. Uh, the, we've spent, uh, several times we've spent community preservation monies down there to save that historic home, and this request is for an additional $29,075. Article 24, again, we're still using community preservation funds. This is to remove hazardous tree removal at the old cemetery. Uh, they need to remove an additional 44 trees. Uh, the sum would be $105,000. Uh, just uh, so people realize when that cemetery was established, there were no trees there. Uh, we've been removing trees, especially the dangerous trees, and they have been planting friendlier trees, uh, I'll put it that way, that won't cause damage uh, to these historic headstones or damage or, or possibly a liability issue of a, a branch coming down and hitting some poor person that's uh, visiting the cemetery. So I believe once we remove these additional 44 trees, that that should be the end of that. And, uh, and while I'm speaking about this, I, I want to send out uh, to Jean Thoreau, who's done a, a just phenomenal job uh, restoring the monuments, uh, fixing up the old cemetery. Uh, he's a one of our cemetery commissioners, but Jean is, is, has been dedicated not only in Southwick, but other cemeteries yeah, too. He does a lot of work in Westfield. And he does a lot of work in Westfield and up at uh, uh, Quabbin. Um, so, but this is beautiful because if, if you go to the Spirit Walk that the Historical Society has once a year, what a difference. You, you can read a lot of these headstones now. And uh, it's, it's kudos to uh, Gene and his staff and, and all the other volunteers. Article 25, we're still on community preservation money, and this is to repair the slate roof and cupola at our police department, which is a historic building. This is uh, the amount of $70,000. Article 
26, again, still with community preservation monies. And this is replacing a flooring at the Southwick Housing Authority uh, for a cost of $45,000. So as you can see, uh, community preservation is using money for housing, recreation, and historical. So it's a, a blend of, uh, of uh, several different articles. Um, each article is voted on separately. So if, if you have questions, you can ask on each article and uh, make your uh, thoughts known. Article 27, and butt in, mm -hmm. uh, Madam Moderator, mm -hmm. if, if you have anything you'd like to say. Article 7 is something that came from uh, uh, the select board. It's to see if the uh, citizens of the town of Southwick want to start a municipal aggregation of electrical load. Uh, basically what we're doing, it would uh, authorize the select board to negotiate with different energy suppliers. And uh, if we choose someone, that would give people the option to sign up as Southwick residents. It's my understanding that most of these firms, you can sign up if you wish, you can uh, sign out if you're not happy. Uh, so it's just another uh, uh, method of people saving money by having a different supplier. Article 28 is the intermissible agreement with the city of Westfield for our wastewater that we ship to the regional uh, uh, excuse me, it isn't a regional, but a, the um, uh, treatment plant in the city of Westfield. 25 years ago, we signed an agreement with the city of Westfield, uh, negotiated it, and it's, it's time is up. We're in the process of negotiating a new agreement with Westfield. Uh, the language has all been worked out, and now it's just negotiating the uh, fee. Uh, I'll be quite honest, uh, Westfield has increased the fee to their people, so unfortunately I, I'm, I'm sure that uh, they're going to be looking for an increase. So the last uh, time you negotiated this fee was 25 years ago? 25 years ago. Wow. 25 <laughs> years ago. So, uh, and, uh, but the benefits, you know, I, I, I supported sewers, worked very hard to bring sewers uh, it all developed because of Congamon Lake, right. trying to get sewers to get any of the things that shouldn't be going into our lake to right. get it out of there. And we expanded it through our downtown area and into several neighborhoods. We'd like to see it expanded, but uh, the costs have increased so greatly at uh, yep. the last two attempts at expanding it into additional neighborhoods has fallen short. Voters have voted no. Uh, but uh, the, the improvement to Congamon Lakes, which acts as a recharge area to our aquifer, mm. uh, the benefits are, are, are substantial. Mm. So uh, nobody likes to see fees go up, but uh, unfortunately, I think mm. everybody's aware of uh, the inflation that we're in right now. Uh, everything seems to cost more. Article 29, we're getting into... Uh, uh, the different issues of the planning board and just give me a second here because I'm trying to find my notes very quickly I met with the town planner to make sure that uh, I understood exactly uh, what they were trying to achieve and uh, basically he dumbed it down and I appreciate him for doing that uh, there's going to be several articles from the planning board. And of course, they're going to be at the end of the town meeting. Very boring stuff. But what they're trying to do is clean up some of the language that it currently exists. So Article uh, 28 uh, I, I, I apologize. I, I misspoke. I'm on Article 28 and that is, uh, I was going by my old one, Article 28 is, uh, is to authorize the select board to, uh, well, Article 28 was the sewer. Article 29 is an article to um, 
allow veterans to establish a volunteer tax write-off program. Another thing that Gene Throw has put a lot of time in. Correct, correct. We have a similar program for seniors, uh, but this program would be something established similar to the senior write-off program. And uh, basically it'd be uh, veterans could work off up to $1,500 off their uh, tax bill and uh, they would be working as, as Gene sees it, helping out at the cemetery. So if this would, if the voters approve this, this would be one more way of, of uh, helping uh, our veterans in the town of Southwick. Now, we're going on to Article 30, and this is a zoning by to amend parking and access. And again, the planning board is trying to clean up language because some of the language that they currently have concerning common driveways uh, would be confusing. Uh, the number of feet off the roads, the number of uh, impervious material. So what this would do would give the planning board and DPW a little more leeway to make sure that something that goes in there is uh, cognitive that we want the water to go back into the soil, but also it would be something where we wouldn't have to worry about a fire truck or an ambulance that uh, they would, uh, wouldn't have difficulties uh, uh, getting to those residents. All right, Article 31 is to accept sawgrass lane as a public way. This is a process when a development goes through. Once it's completed and once the final paving is done, there's a checkoff list of, of, of different things by the DPW and the selectmen as road commissioners. We hold a hearing, we've held the hearing, and now we're going to be recommending that Sawgrass Lane become a public way. This also helps us with our Chapter 90s monies because we get additional Chapter 90s money. All right, number 32. We're getting there, folks. We're getting there. Number 32 is again from the planning board um, and it, it's, uh, it's an, again uh, concerning the impact of, of driveways, uh, making sure uh, water goes uh, back into the ground and make sure that it's safer for our uh, police and fire in case of emergency situation. And to Article 33. Again, the planning board. And again, I have to look at my notes. Luckily, uh, we'll have someone from the planning board that can answer all questions that night. Right, right. So, you know. so if you read through this at home before you come and you have specific questions, either John Goddard or Mike Doherty from the planning board will be able to answer them for you. Right, <laughs> you know, and, and, and again, there's a lot to read here. I'm not a planning board expert. But basically, again, not to be repetitive, is to clean up some of our language that we currently have to make sure that we don't have a problem uh, when people build new homes or people are renovating, things of that nature, that we're addressing several of these issues. Uh, I think I did 34. Is it off street parking and loading? Uh, another planning board one? Right. Right. Yep. So, okay. again, uh, as the town moderator says, our town planner and uh, planning board and usually the chairman is there to go over these things. And, uh, but I'd ask people to please read them ahead. And if you do have any questions, you can always reach out ahead of time to our town planner. Uh, Article 35. We are one of the last remaining towns that have, have a combined town clerk, treasurer, collector. So we are in the process. We've hired a consultant to make recommendations. They're, they're doing a study as we speak. And, but what we're going to try to do is, 
is ask the voters to approve this because we need the voters to approve this because it would take a, a special act of the legislature for, to allow the town of Southwick to actually do this. Uh, in the budget, you're going to see money for design uh, for the town, uh, town hall to actually figure out how we're going to split off these offices and where people are actually going to be located. But the end result is the workload has, has, has increased considerably. It's now a case where we need to have uh, most likely one individual who will take care of the town clerk in all the new issues that, that the town clerk is facing and have either a treasurer collector or a financial uh, administrator that will be handling the money end. And I th already said to, once this is done, I've already said, it's my hope we're going to go to, we now have uh, quarterly billing, but uh, right now you only get two bills a year, and you're supposed to save the additional coupon. It's a headache, and my hope is once we go to this, people will be getting four separate bills each year, so it's less confusing. People can remember, this is when I have to pay my taxes, so... Um, I, I think once it's done, it only professionalizes uh, your town government even more. Article 36 is something that's been uh, head up by uh, Doug Moglin on the select board. He's our uh, technology expert, and this is something that uh, people voted on at our last special town meeting. Uh, if we are to bring high-speed internet, we by statute have to set up a municipal light plant ahead. You have to do it at two con vote to do that at two consecutive meetings. Yep. We voted in the positive at the last special town meeting, so now we're asking the voters to again to vote to establish a municipal light plant. That gives us the opportunity to uh, go into the high-speed uh, internet, and that would be Article 37, that if the voters approve Article 36, we're going to be asking for a bonding issue of $3 million, along with using $900,000 in ARPA money that we have encumbered, that's American Rescue Act plan. With those monies, uh, we would seek out an entity uh, such as uh, Westfield's uh, City Fiber uh, to uh, come into town that would actually take care of everything from the poles to the wires to the service to the billing, everything. So uh, I think Mr. Moglin is going to be speaking on this. He does a much better job explaining mm -hmm. this, but uh, it's similar to what they did in Westfield. As they went into a neighbor and people hooked up and you generated money, you'd move into the next neighborhood and then the next neighbor in the next neighborhood. The only thing that I said to the select board, just as I said many years ago to Continental Cable, which was before Comcast, any agreement we sign, they have to agree to do the entire town not just the uh, neighborhoods where they're going to make money, but they have to do the entire town, bring this high-speed Internet to every single household business in the town of Southwick. All right. It's definitely something that people have been asking for. People have been asking for more competition with Internet pricing over the last couple of years. So it's and, and especially since COVID, mm -hmm. people working at home. Working. Uh, we have a lot, a, lot, a lot more people working at home. This would give them that added, uh, as Mr. Mogan likes to say, this is our moonshot. Yeah. You know, uh, this would uh, bring us into the future and uh, allow people to have that kind of uh, uh, fiber optics. Article 18, we've made it, the final <laughs> article. And <laughs> believe it or not, this is a simple article that gives the town more leeway on when to start the annual town meeting. And I think we compromised uh -huh. that we would said that we wouldn't start it any sooner than 5.30 p.m. 
Currently, we can't start before 7 p.m. Correct. And, uh, I mean, there'd be times where we finish the special town meeting in 10 minutes. And we'd take a little break. And, and <laughs> people would have to sit there for 50 minutes. Yeah. So this, break, this yeah. would give us an, an opportunity to uh, speed things up. And, uh, Madam Monterey, one more time. I, I, I think if you could explain in detail some of the ideas for speeding up this town okay, meeting. Okay, so first of all, what we'll do is we don't have to read the warrant as it's posted as the town clerk used to do, but we will make a motion to still act on the articles individually, so that won't be read. But it will still be posted, and she'll verify that it's been posted. I'm actually in the process of making a PowerPoint presentation that will have all the articles up on the screen, but I will not be reading the individual articles. Some of the articles I will say um, as printed in the warrant. So that everyone, we, we'll make sure that everybody has a copy of the warrant in their hands. Um, with voting, we're gonna do a voice vote and then we'll do a, if we can't tell the difference. Last year we had a vote and I think it was 107 to 36 and we couldn't tell with the acoustics in the auditorium that it was that far apart, so we had to do a hand count. But we'll just hold up our cards and we should hopefully visually be able to see the difference between such a, a discrepancy of numbers and we won't have to go to our tellers counting. But then if we do, we have to go to tellers counting, but we absolutely can do that. I think it'll be great. I'm really excited about some of the changes. I think it'll move along. It'll give people an opportunity to talk. Um, I definitely want people to have an opportunity to talk. I want you to reach out to the John Goddard if you have questions about a planning article, questions about a budget, you could reach out to the Finance Committee. And if you have questions about any article or how the articles are presented or um, if you need to amend an article, you need to do it in writing. So if you are thinking that you need to amend an article, make sure you have that prepared. Or if you have any other questions about motions and amendments and things like that, please feel free to send me an email. I won't know the, all the answers, but I will find out. Yeah, and I think most of the questions, and correct me if I'm wrong, most of them are a simple majority, but any of the zonings Zoning are, are two-thirds. Borrowing authorization Borrowing two authorization, two-thirds two vote. So uh, in, in some cases, we might have to count if, if, if it's not unanimous. Right. Absolutely. Uh, so, and we have great and tellers that come out and do hand counts. Absolutely. And just, just for anybody that's coming for the first time, when you walk in, you check in, the agendas are right there, the finance committee booklet is right there for you to pick up so that you have all that material in your hand in the auditorium. So you don't have to worry about bringing something with you. It's you all provided. You have to bring your reading glasses, as we've noticed that some of the numbers get a little small. Right. So make sure you bring your, uh, bring your reading glasses but, and uh, bring your voice so you can say yes or no. Right. Because this is your town. And again, purest form of government there is. If you don't vote in the affirmative, we can't do it. So take the time. Uh, I know May is a busy time for a lot of people, but the more people we get there, the, the better government we have. And with Absolutely. That, Don't be deterred by people saying, oh, it's long. I'm, we're really trying to make it as exciting as we can. <laughs> right. Thank you very much. We'll see you well, on May Tuesday. May 16th. May 16th. Tuesday, May 16th. High School Auditorium. <laughs>